Introduction The first principle is that you must not fool yourself and you are the easiest person to fool. Richard Feynman Maybe you are young and brimming with ambition. Maybe you are young and you are struggling. Maybe you have made that first couple million, signed your first deal, been selected to some elite group, or maybe you're already accomplished enough to last a lifetime. Maybe you're stunned to find out how empty it is at the top. Maybe you're charged with leading others through a crisis. Maybe you just got fired. Maybe you just hit rock bottom. Wherever you are, whatever you're doing, the worst enemy already lives inside you. Your ego. Not me, you think. No one would ever call me an egomaniac. Perhaps you've always thought of yourself as a pretty balanced person. But for people with ambitions, talents, drives and potential to fulfill, ego comes with the territory. Precisely what makes us so promising as thinkers, doers, creatives and entrepreneurs, what drives us to the top of those fields, makes us makes us vulnerable to this darker side of the psyche. Now this is not a book about ego in the Freudian sense. Freud was fond of explaining the ego by way of analogy. Our ego was a rider on a horse, our unconscious drives representing the animal while the ego tried to direct them. Modern psychologists on the other hand use the word egotist to di- to refer to someone dangerously focused on themselves and with disregard for anyone else. All of these definitions are true enough but of little value outside of a clinical setting. The ego we see common goes by a more casual definition and unhealthy belief in one's own importance arrogance self-centered ambition that's the definition this book will use it's that petulant child inside every person the one that chooses getting his or her way over anything or anyone else the need to be better than more than recognized for far past any reasonable utility that's ego it's the sense of superiority and a certainty that exceeds the bounds of confidence and talent it's when the notion of ourselves and the world grows so inflated that it becomes to feel distorted and it distorts the reality that surrounds us when as the football coach bill walsh explained Self-confidence becomes arrogance, assertiveness becomes obstinacy, and self-assurance becomes reckless abandon. This is the ego, as the writer Cyril Connolly warned, that sucks us down like the claw of gravity. In this way, ego is the enemy of what you want and what you have, of mastering a craft, of real creative insight. of working well with others of building loyalty and support of longevity of repeating and retaining your success it repulses advantages and opportunities it's a magnet for enemies and errors it's skyla and sharp d's most of us aren't egomaniacs but ego is there at the root of almost every conceivable problem and obstacle and why we can't win to why we need to win all the time and the and at the expense of others from why we don't have what we want to why having what we want doesn't seem to make us feel any better we usually see it this way we think of something else as to blame for our problems most often other people we are as the poet lucretius put it a few thousand years ago the pro- proverbial sick man ignorant of the cause of his malady especially for successful people who can't see what ego prevents them from doing because all they can see is what they've already done with every ambition and goal we have big or small ego 
is there undermining us on every journey we've put everything into pursuing. The pioneering CEO Harold Jenin compared egoism to alcoholism. The egotist does not stumble about knocking things off his desk. He does not stammer or drool. No, instead, he becomes more and more arrogant. And some people, not knowing what is underneath such an attitude, mistake his arrogance for a sense of power and self-confidence. You could say that they start to make mistake about themselves too, not realizing the disease they've contracted or that they're killing themselves with it. If ego is the voice that tells us we are better than we really are, we can say ego inhibits true success by preventing a direct and honest connection to the world around us. One of the early members of Alcoholics Anonymous defined ego as a a conscious separation from from what everything the ways the separation manifests itself negatively are immense we can't work with other people if we've put up walls we can't improve the world if we don't understand it ours or ourselves we can't take or receive feedback if we are incapable of or uninterested in hearing from outside sources we can't recognize opportunities or create them if instead of seeing what is in front of us we live inside our own fantasy without an accurate accounting of our abilities compared to others what we have is not confidence but delusion how are we not supposed to reach motivate or lead other people if we can't relate to their needs because we have lost touch with our own the performance of artist marina abramovich puts it directly if you start believing in your greatness it is the death of your creativity just one thing keeps ego around comfort pursuing great work whether it's in sports or art or business is often terrifying ego soothes that fear it's a solved that insecurity replacing the rational and aware parts of our psyche with bluster and self-absorption ego tells us what we want to hear when we want to hear it but it is a short-term fix with a long-term consequence ego was always there now it's emboldened now more than ever our culture fans the flames of ego It's never been easier to talk, to puff ourselves up. We can brag about our goals to millions of our fans and followers. Things only rock stars and cult leaders used to have. We can follow and interact with our idols on Twitter. We can read books and sites and watch TED Talks and drink from a fire hose of inspiration and validation like never before. We can name ourselves CEO of our exists only on paper company. We can announce big news on social media and let the congratulations roll in. We can publish articles about ourselves in outlets that used to be sources of objective journalism. Some of us do this more than others, but it's only a matter of degree. Besides the changes in technology, we are told to believe in our uniqueness above all else we are told to think big live big and to be memorable and dare greatly we think that success requires a bold vision or some sweeping plan after all that's what the founders of this company or that championship team supposedly had but did they did they really we see risk taking swagger and successful people in the media an ego for our own successes try to reverse engineer the right attitude the right pose we intuit a casual causal relationship that isn't there you assume the symptoms of successes are the same as success itself and in our naivety confuse the byproduct with the cause sure ego has worked for some many of history's most famous men and women 
were notoriously egotistical. But so were many of its greatest failures, far more of them in fact. But here we are with a culture that urges us to roll the dice, to make the gamble, ignoring the stakes. Wherever you are, ego is too. At any given time in life, people find themselves at one of three stages. We are aspiring to something, trying to make a dent in the universe. We have achieved success, or perhaps a little, perhaps a lot. Or we have failed, recently or continually. Most of us are in these stages in a fluid sense. We are aspiring until we succeed. We succeed until we fail or until we aspire to more. And after we fail, we begin to aspire or succeed again. Ego is the enemy every step along this way. In a sense, ego is the enemy of building, of maintaining, and of recovering. When things come fast and easy, this might be fine. But in times of change, of difficulty, And therefore, the three parts that this book is organized into Aspire, Success, Failure The aim of that structure is simple To help you suppress ego early Before bad habits take hold To replace the temptations of ego with humility and discipline When we experience success and cultivate strength and fortitude so that when fate turns against you, you are not wrecked by failure. In short, it will help you be humble in our aspirations, gracious in our success, resilient in our failures. This is not to say that you are not unique and you don't have something amazing to contribute in your short time on this planet. This is not to say that there is not room to push past creative boundaries, to invent, to feel inspired, or to aim for truly ambitious change and innovation. On the contrary, in order to properly do these things and take these risks, we need balance. As the Quaker William Penn observed, the buildings that lie so exposed to the weather need a good foundation. So what now? This book you hold in your hands is written around one optimistic assumption. Your ego is not some power you are forced to satiate at every turn. It can be managed. It can be directed. In this book, we'll look at individuals like William Tecumseh, Sherman, Catherine Graham, Jackie Robinson, Eleanor Roosevelt, Bill Walsh, Benjamin Franklin, Billy Sirius, Angela Merkel, and George C. Marshall. Could they have accomplished what they've accomplished? Saving faltering companies, advancing the art of war, integrating baseball, revolutionizing football offense, standing up to tyranny, braving bearing misfortune. If ego had left them ungrounded and self-absorbed, it was their sense of reality and awareness. One that author and strategist Robert Greene once said, we must take to like a spider in its web. That was at the core of their great art, great writing, great design, great business, great marketing, and great leadership. What we find when we study these individuals is that they were grounded, circumspect, and unflinchingly real. Not that any of them were wholly without ego, but they knew how to suppress it channel it, subsume it when it counted. They were great yet humble. Wait, so, but so and so had a huge ego and was successful. But what about Steve Jobs? What about Kanye West? We can seek to rationalize the worst behavior by pointing to outliers, but no one is truly successful because they are delusional, self-absorbed or disconnected. Even if these traits are correlated or associated with certain well-known individuals, so are a few others. Addiction, abuse of themselves and others, depression, 
mania in fact what we see when we study these people is that they did their best works in moments when they fought back against these impulses disorders and flaws only when free of ego and baggage can anyone perform to their utmost for this reason we are also going to look at individuals like howard hughes and persian king xerxes john delorean alexander the great and the many cautionary tales of others who lost their grip on reality and in the process made it clear what a gamble ego can be we'll look at closely at the costly lessons they learned and the price they paid in misery and self-destruction. We'll look at how often even the most successful people vacillate between humility and ego and problems this causes. When we remove ego, we are left with what is real. What replaces ego is humility. Yes, but rock hard humility and confidence Whereas ego is artificial, this type of confidence can hold weight. Ego is stolen. Confidence is earned. Ego is self-annoyed. The swagger is artifice. One is girding itself. The other is gaslighting. It's the difference between potent and poisonous. As you'll see in the pages that follow, the self-confidence took an unamusing turn. and underestimated general and turned him into the into America's foremost warrior and strategist during the civil war ego took a different general from the heights of power and influence after that same war and drove him to the destitution and ignominy one took a quiet sober german scientist and made her not just a new kind of leader but a force of for peace The other took two different but equally brilliant and bold engineering minds of the 20th century and built them up in a whirlwind of hype and celebrity before dashing their homes against the rocks of failure, bankruptcy, scandal and insanity. One guided one of the worst teams in NFL history to the Super Bowl in 3 seasons and then on to be one of the most dominant dynasties in the game. Meanwhile, countless other coaches, politicians, entrepreneurs and writers have overcome similar odds only to succumb to the more inevitable probability of handing the top spot right back to someone else. Some learn humility, some choose ego, some are prepared for the vicissitudes of fate, both positive and negative. others are not which you will choose which you will be you've picked up this book because you sense that you will need to answer this question eventually consciously or not well here we are let's get to it